CMO of Dot Club Domains. We're the registry for just Dot Club. So unlike some of the portfolio players, we chose to uh, go after just a single domain extension. And we raised, as a little startup ourselves, we raised um, $11.2 million to go after and market uh, the Dot Club domain. Um, so my talk this morning I called, Haters Gonna Hate, But New Domains Are Great. Um, because there's been a lot of uh, people, especially some people in the domain investing space, if you read comments on the blogs, that there's been a fair amount of negativity about uh, the new domain program, the new domain extension expansion. Um, and it's interesting because it's interesting to see so much negativity, yet not an understanding that not everyone's coming at it from the same point of view. I mean, really. Um, you know, perspective matters. Take a moment and look at that, and you'll see, right? You know, are you looking at it from the guy in the island, or are you looking at it from the guy in the boat? In this case, they, <laughs> they both think they found salvation. Wait till they come together and find out what the reality is like. So, the program has started, you know, we're over 18 million registrations to date. Um, yes, that's considerably less than what ICANN's original projections were. It's probably considerably less than what the individual registries and registrars <coughs> expected it to be at, that point, at this point in time. However, it's still a big number, and there are still you know, hundreds of thousands of live active websites and end users who are very happy with the domain extensions that they've chosen for themselves or their businesses. There's been hundreds of millions of dollars invested in the space, and there's been millions of dollars made already as a return in many cases. So to just make a blanket statement that the new GTL, new GTL, the new <laughs> GTLD program is bad and, and negative is, is just really not being fair to the realities and fair to the facts. Um, but still, haters are going to hate, and that's fine. You know, the haters can hate, but those who are truly hating and not paying attention may also be missing opportunities, because there are many great opportunities to make money, and there are many great opportunities for domain investors in this space. But it's important to recognize that not all domains are created equal. You know, so yes, there are opportunities, but not necessarily with every extension. You know, not every extension has opportunities for domain investors. Um, People have to recognize that the interests of investors and the interests of the registries are not necessarily aligned. You know, and just because something may not be good for domain investors doesn't mean it's not good for the registry. It doesn't mean it's not good for the end users who are using those domains. So as domain investors, you want to figure out where are the opportunities, which are the domain extensions that are good. But many of them are not. You know, Dot Bank's a great example. Dot Bank launched, launched a year ago. It's a regulated domain. After a year, they have almost 6,000 banks registered. They're paying on average $1,000 a year. That's $6 million in revenue for a registry that operates lean and mean. They've got a nice, solid business going. It's very profitable. It's good for the banks who are leveraging those names, especially banks that did not apply for their own extension as a dot brand. They can now use a dot bank to gain that same level of trust. So they have a very strong business model. There's absolutely no opportunity for domain investors with dot bank. You know, it's, it's regulated, it's expensive, there's not really a premium name marketplace, so there's really not much of an opportunity for domain investors. But is it bad? No, it's a great business, they're doing very well. Same with the dot brands. You know, it was great to hear the perspective from one of the dot brands here and having Philips here in person. But for the dot brands, as was pointed out by Philips, there's great opportunities for the brand. It engenders trust. It removes the opportunity for phishing and counterfeits. So there's a lot of good reasons for dot brands to have their name. Is there an opportunity for domain investors with the dot brands? No, you know, they're, they're gonna control their namespace. You're not gonna be able to buy and trade dot brand names. But is it bad that dot brands exist? Not at all, it's very good. And in fact, the dot brands are gonna raise the awareness that's going to raise the value of these domains for all of us, including the domain investors who are investing in new domain extensions. And we're seeing it to happen. It's happened a lot slower, and, and we got some insights into why the brands are very secretive in the way they go about their business. 
But it's starting to happen. Just uh, the week before last, while we were at GBD, Canon, you know, a global consumer electronics company, launched global.canon, and they moved their .com over to their .canon, and they did it in a very nice way. They explained it very well on their website. They explained why they're doing this. Um, and so that's great. That's going to raise exposure. Other big companies like Google are slowly but surely rolling out their dot brand names. So Google's new registrar business is now at domains.google. Excuse me. Um, so it's happening. Um, brands like Swatch, you know, Swatch really understands domains and is using them cleverly. They launched pop.swatch to promote their pop line of watches, but they're not just limiting their use to um, their own dot brand, they're also using other extensions. For example, they registered swatch.club and they cleverly use it to redirect to a deep link with their, within their website where they have information for the Swatch Club. So that's a really good use of a meaningful domain extension. They don't have to build a new website. They already have content. They already have a club and they have content about a club. But that content exists at a very deep link. You know, no one's going to remember swatch.com <laughs> forward slash en forward slash swatch hyphen club about hyphen the hyphen club. They can never use that in any marketing materials. No consumer can ever remember that. But now if they want to do a campaign for the swatch club to direct people to sign up for the club at that page, they can use swatch.club. It's easy to remember. It's easy to market. It makes good sense. So that's an intelligent use of one of the new extensions that has some meaning. So swatch is behind these new campaigns. But awareness is definitely not there yet. I agree with everything you said, that there's very little awareness. But just like in Game of Thrones, winter is coming, awareness is coming. Things are happening, including very recent things, that I think will have a great impact on raising the awareness. And the dot brands are a big part of that. And I want to take a sidestep for a moment as I talk about awareness to just mention, since Andy did her nice spiel for the ICA, I want to make a, a brief spiel for the DNA, the Domain Name Association, uh, of which I'm a board member and chair of the marketing committee. But the DNA, one of our missions is to try to come together and raise awareness and manage initiatives to do that. We're pushing hard to get some funding from ICANN to support that effort. If you were at the GDD Summit, you heard a lot of discussion about that. And what's interesting about the DNA and, and why I would encourage you to look into it and consider joining, if it makes sense for you, is it's the only association that truly can represent the industry across the board. It's not limited to ICANN contracted parties. So when you look at the membership of the DNA, you have registries, registrars, backend service providers, CCTLDs, uh, consultants. You really have a great cross section of the whole spectrum of the domain industry. So, uh, and one of our primary goals is to work together to help raise. Uh, that awareness. So I encourage you to take a look at the DNA.org. If you want to see great examples of domain names created or used in the wild, go to inthewild.domains where we catalog examples of domains being used for uh, clever campaigns and other things. And again, this is all domains. It's not a new TLD organization. This is supporting the domain name industry as a whole. We support .com, all the country codes, it doesn't matter. It's about domain names. So I encourage you to take a look at the Domain Name Association. Back to business. So awareness is coming. You know, Google spent $25 million to get the rights to .app. You know, apps are big. We all have apps on our phone. We all live in an app-driven world. When Google starts rolling out .app and people are having their .app address pointing to their mobile apps, that's going to do a tremendous job of raising the awareness on the consumer level that there's other things you can do to the right of the dot. Um, GMO, Japanese company, huge in Japan. Their registry, Onabe, has a 93% market share in Japan. From the registry perspective, it's literally the only people we have to talk to in Japan. It's bizarre. It's unlike any other market. Big company, big resources. They spent $41 million to get that shop. They're going to be putting a huge marketing effort behind that. They're not going to sit idly by on that investment. Um, so there's going to be a lot of awareness raised around dot .shop as well. Probably the most exciting thing that was announced since the program launched from an awareness and a potential awareness perspective was last week, or a week before I should say, when um, Automatic, the company behind WordPress, revealed that all along it was they who had bid $19 million to win <coughs> rights to dot .blog in auction. So you have to think about that for a moment. 
Automatic and WordPress. WordPress, I think it's something like 30%. Michaela, you may even know. It's something like 30% of the webs, so the websites on the internet are powered by WordPress. And then they have a huge, yeah, it's a huge, huge presence. Um, and the good news is they're not limiting dot blog to their customers. So dot blog will be open to anyone. So if you have a blog that's on Blogger or if you're using TypePad or any other platform, you still can register a dot blog name. But when you think about the number of people who read blogs, I think um, according to WordPress, over 409 million people view more than 21.5 billion blog pages every month. So this is a huge audience. And, and even more important than that, by definition, every blog has an audience. That's why people have a blog. You want to have an audience. So everyone who registers and uses a dot blog name for their blog is going to be exposing that to a large number of people. So, so I think it's very exciting that WordPress is behind this name. It's a beautiful fit. WordPress is a company that does things because they think it's right, not because they're worried about the financial considerations. So they're not in this for the money. They're in this because they believe it's the right thing to do. It's right for them to push that blog. And it's a great, great mix. And I think it's a very exciting development for everyone in the industry. Uh, and it's going to do a lot to raise awareness over the coming months. So things are happening. They're not happening as fast as we all hoped, but they are happening. So Doc Club, I'll talk a little bit and update you a little bit about what we've been up to and what we do. So we just celebrated our second anniversary. Um, so it's been two years since we launched in May of 2014. Last year when I was uh, here, uh, well not here, but in Valencia, but at Domain in Europe, we had uh, 220,000 registrations at that time. Um, today we're now over 780,000 registrations actually, more than, uh, than since I updated this uh, chart. So our registrations have grown in a nice clip. Um, we like to say that we're number one in usage. Uh, we're number one in industry awards, for those people who like awards. Um, we're the number one new extension on GoDaddy. Uh, and we're number one for a single domain in total premium name sales. And of course, we believe we're number one in passion. You know, our passion for .club is, is really important to everyone in the company. Um, I mentioned GoDaddy, we've been uh, number one of the new extensions on GoDaddy for a while, and just last week we <coughs> are the first uh, new extension to cross 100,000 registrations uh, just on GoDaddy. So we have over 100,000 registrations just uh, with GoDaddy. Uh, but aside from the top number of registrations, you know, there are other data points that we get more excited about. We have almost 140,000 unique registrants. So yes, there are a lot of domain investors who have big dot club portfolios, but there are also a lot of individuals out there who just have their dot club for their business or their website or for their use. So we're excited about that. We have over 70,000 live active websites. So these are not park pages, these are not redirects, these are real websites with real content using a dot club name as their primary <coughs> web address, which we think is very important. And again, you know, being number one in usage is far more important to us than being number one in, in total registrations. Um, Bill Hartzer, who some of you may know from uh, Globe Runner, recently switched to a new agency. He put out a report where he analyzed the live sites indexed by Google uh, of all the new extensions. And when he did this, um, Dot Club represented almost 12% of all the live active websites for the new TLDs. So we have a lot of activity. Um, and interesting things, one of the very first live site with content for a dot club name which registered shortly after we launched was wooden.club and if you go to wooden.club you will see an animated gif of this wooden club floating across the screen why i have no idea but wooden.club was one of the first sites we noted with live active content since then we've got a lot more interesting sites and interesting stories i love to tell the story about rye russell rye russell is a serial entrepreneur out of, out of maine who wanted to build a brand around men's apparel. He's got a thing for kind of funky socks. These are, these are his sock designs. And he wanted to put together a sock subscription service and then offer matching ties and matching scarves. And he went to GoDaddy to register a domain name. He had never heard of Dot Club, didn't know it existed. And the recommendation came up with a Dot Club suggestion. And he said in his own words, like the light bulb went off in his head. As soon as he saw that there was a dot club extension, for him, the vision for his business gelled. And he went on to register 
and rebrand his company as manbrands.club. And then he has registered 16 other names related, mansocks.club, manscars.club, et cetera, et cetera. And he's rolling out his whole business um, rebranded under the dot club name. So I have actually some, some samples. If you like my fancy yellow, yellow socks, I'm going to just, like they do the baseball games, I'm going to toss socks out into the audience. And raise your hand if you want me to throw a pair of socks in your direction. Ready? Pink ones. No, you want the orange ones. That's orange. Yeah. Like <laughs> the basketball. He's a monkey. So I would say dot club never gave you anything. There we go. If anyone didn't get a pair of socks and you really want them, that's all I have about contacting you. But we're excited to hear these entrepreneur stories. You know, when we, when we encounter someone like Roy Russell, uh, we get really excited. And we talk to them and work with them and see how we can help them market. I actually introduced him to, to the GoDaddy PR team because he registered at GoDaddy and they actually mentioned him in an article they ran. So it's really nice. We really try to support the dot club community. So with that in mind, for our second birthday, we did a short video, which I'll share with you, to just show some of the different variety of, of live sites using Dot Club. So what's we've been living my adventure. Now I'd love to help those of you that want to live more adventurously. And I'd love to do this together. So let's start a club. Socks change your life. Join the Top 100 Club and you will meet interesting people in your town. Check out the website www.top100people.club. Get your shit together, Club. How may I direct your call? As you can see, there, there's a wide range of companies, businesses, brands, individuals, celebrities, sports figures, etc., using a dot club name. They're promoting it, they're creating videos, they're doing stuff, and all of that helps to raise awareness. So these, these are real registrants who are really happy. Um, with what they've done. You know, when we first launched, we had our Pyramid of Passion, which kind of breaks down the five key verticals that we saw potential usage for in Dot Club. 
And two years later, I'd have to say that there's no one of these layers that actually stands out. Um, we see registrations and we see active usage across all of these layers, and, and that's really exciting. And it's not just across the different verticals, but it's really on a global basis. The word club is unusual because it means the same thing and it means something all over the world in English. So last week I was in Amsterdam at the Next Web, and I ran into a woman from Croatia who was all excited because she saw my dot club shirt and says, because she, for the last year and a half, has been running her business under a dot club name. So I asked her a little bit about it. Hi, it's Jeff Sass from Dot Club. I'm here at the Next Web Europe, and I'm standing here with Martina from Magic Four Dot Club. Yes. Martina was online to get a cup of free coffee from the coffee.club station here. And she says, are you with Dot Club? I said, of course I am. And she said, well, guess what? And she showed me her card. So I'd love for Martina to tell us a little bit about what her business does and how she ended up using a Dot Club name. Yes, hi, thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey, very much for letting me know that you are from the Dot Club. So uh, our brand, Magic 4 Club, uh, was made uh, half a year, a uh, year and a half ago. And we are dealing with travel uh, PR and travel branding and based on Instagram. And when we were thinking about uh, how to give the name to our brand, then we saw, realized that we have uh, four different segments in our business. That is travel, tourism, communication and events. And that's the reason why we wanted to have a club that uh, eventually one day will also become a real club of each of that segment. That's awesome. So we're really happy to have Martina and her company as part of the Dot Club family. Hi, so bye thanks bye. for checking in. We'll see you more from uh, TNW Europe soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. And this is uh, what Martina's website looks like. So she's running magic4.club. So it's really cool and exciting to see all these things from all over the world. Um, now let's talk about premium names. That's what's of most interest to the crowd here. Um, we've done a little under $4 million in premium names since inception. Uh, the highest price for a single dot club domain still is wine.club, which sold for $140,000. We've had a few other names sell for $100,000, uh, like Vegas.club and a few others. We've had, uh, uh, in some of the Chinese auctions, a few um, single or two character names sell in the forty and fifty and sixty thousand dollar range, uh, and then we've had a lot of names sell at lower prices, uh, which is great. Many of our premium names are now available through tiered pricing in the registrar channel. So pretty much any um, premium name that's priced at ten thousand dollars or less, you can get in the registrar channel. Um, and there's some great domains out there at very good prices. Um, so it's a good opportunity to pick up a name very easily at a buy and now price through you know, whatever registrar you use. Um, some really good deals are out there. We also have our names higher than 20,000 listed at CEDO and at Afternit. Um, so that's probably the primary place. And then of course we have a lot of people who approach us directly, who approach the registry directly and we do make deals directly on occasion. And in fact, if anyone here is interested in any, any uh, dot club premium names while you're here, um, and you approach me directly, I'll make sure that you get a special discount for doing it uh, during the main in Europe. So, um, Just bring very, cash. Very happy. No, you don't have to bring cash. <laughs> we trust We trust you. Not a problem. But if you want to make deals, I, I'm very open to discussing that while we're here. Uh, and also, on the tier premium, we'll be releasing on June 16th about 2,500 new registry reserve premium names that haven't been available before will be pushed out into that registrar channel on uh, June 16th. And I think we'll probably publish a list of those names beforehand so you'll be able to look through there and see if, see if there's anything that's of interest to you. Um, so that registrar channel has been very vibrant for us. Um, and a lot of great businesses are using premium names. So the opportunity for premium names, you know, the value is always in getting those names in the hands of the proper end users. So betting.club, that was a premium name. I believe it was a $7,000 name or a $7,500 name that they actually bought through GoDaddy. Um, and um, they set up a great business in Australia. And not only are they using the name, but again, they're spending money promoting it. They've been putting up billboards and bus signs in Australia promoting betting.club. So when a business invests in a premium name, they're going to continue to invest in that business. And then it's great for us, and it's great for all of you to raise the value uh, of the portfolio. So we're excited about that. And to show how a premium name can make a difference, 
Um, there's a company called, they were called, suchfit.club. They actually had a great idea. How many people wear like a Fitbit or track their steps somehow when they walk around, right? If you, sh if you share that data with your friend, you've been limited to only share data with your friends who use the same device. So Fitbit people can talk to Fitbit people and Apple Watch people can talk to Apple Watch people, but Apple Watch people can't talk to Fitbit people. So their idea with Suchfit was to create a platform independent app where you can share your fitness data with your friends and it didn't matter which device they had. It normalized all the data across every platform from Fitbit to up and uh, you know on and on and on. Anyway, they launched the Suchfit.club, didn't get much traction. They came across the name Activity.club, which is a premium name, and it was available at a price that they thought was reasonable. They bought Activity Club and rebranded, and it really rejuvenated the whole company. Everyone got re-energized about what they were doing, and they've gotten a lot much more traction under the uh, Activity Club brand, and they've really integrated Activity.club into their branding. As you noticed from the other video, a lot of companies, for whatever reason, when they use the .club name, they like to incorporate it into their core branding. It reminds me of the early days of .com, when businesses had the .com as part of their brand. We see a lot of businesses that are literally using the .club as part of their brand, which is cool. <coughs> a few days ago, a former employee of ours was in Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf, I should say, and he sent this picture so of a boot.club, a woman walking down the street with a boot.club bag. He was all excited. Of course, I figured it was a woman with boot dot club bag with boots. What I didn't realize it's it's a German name and boot is boat. So it's actually boat dot club, but in German. And that was also a premium name um, that I think was sold by Cito um, to boot dot club. And so this is uh, someone who, if you read German, you'll know more about it than I do. But it's it's a boat club, and they're promoting boot dot club specifically. Um, for their uh, loyalty program. What's interesting is, so they have a, a special website for boot.club, but also on their primary website, boot.de, they are actively promoting boot.club as their loyalty program. And that's a great example about how the new extensions that have meaning can be used in addition to your primary website. It's not always about changing to something new. It's about how can I leverage a domain name that has real meaning in a ways that make sense for marketing and branding in addition to our main website. So they have boot.de, but they're actively using boot.club as well. So I thought that was a great example. And the and other it, thing that's yes. interesting is that it's a German word with an English word. Yeah, that boot, that, if, 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 that was, if that was a boot.club boot in uh, Australia or England, it would be about the trunk of your car. Right, right. right. But, so but the club <laughs> translates. More or less is multilingual. Right. Yeah. So that's a big benefit of this of top club. This it is multilingual. You say it in Dutch, you say it in German. A lot of a lot of languages here in uh, Europe use the word club as a club. In yeah, in Asia, I've I've traveled extensively in Asia throughout China. I see club all over the place. I can't read Mandarin before, and then it says club, and it's. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's very universal. And then we, we sold recently um, Lending Dot Club to the company Lending Club. Um, and of course, even though their brand is Lending Club, the word lending is a generic term. So again, for domain investors, there are definite opportunities out there with generic terms and keywords. And they paid uh, $25,000 for <coughs> Lending.club. And you know, we gave them a pretty good deal because you know, our goal is always to get the domain into the hands of the most likely end users. So for us, having them own that name made a lot of good sense. Um, and then there's China. <laughs> Uh, we've had some discussion about China yesterday. China has been very interesting for everyone in the industry. Um, it's been very interesting for us at Dot Club. <coughs> we were early to China. We actually took our first trip to China, Colin and I, um, in uh, January of 2014. So before we actually launched, we made our first trip to China and started talking to registrars there. So, and since then, the company's been back, you know, about 15 or 20 times. I've been there eight times personally. So we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money um, to grow the business in China for the reasons that Brady mentioned. Club is actually understood and utilized um, pretty extensively as a word in China. Um, today, actually, China accounts for a little more than half of our registration. So it has been a significant contributor um, to our overall registration numbers. Uh, on the premium name side, it accounts for all, all, over $2 million of our premium name sales actually have come from China as well. So China's been a significant market. 
that uh, monkey, you see, you know, we, we like to do a little monkey business now and then. So it is the year of the monkey in China. So that's our monkey. That's Hu Mimi, um, which uh, he is. Uh, he appears in comic books and comic strips and on WeChat icons a lot. And now we have a live costume who, as we speak, is, is touring through China and just was at the hosting con China in Shenzhen. So that's uh, Hu Mimi uh, helping us market in China. Um, so it's been interesting. China. Last year was great. We've had some very successful auctions uh, in China on different platforms. Uh, we have an auction coming up actually June 8th, and then it ends on the 14th. So you can start bidding on the 8th, it ends on the 14th with West.cn. Um, and my understanding is they do have an English interface, so um, the auction is not just limited to Chinese bidders, but you can um, bid from other countries as well in English. That auction, these are the names that will be in that auction. Um, some of them have obviously F. Club could be used in a number of ways outside of China as well. Um, one like, or two. like what? <laughs> like, give us some examples there. Well, there's yep. a couple of words that begin with F. Fire truck. Oh, Actually, so that begins with F and ends with U C K. That's true. That's true. Fire truck. That's good. Think, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> think about it. So that, that's the, that's the longer F word. Hmm. Um, but anyway, these are the word. These are the uh, the names that will be in the West.cn auction that starts on June 8th. If, if anyone's interested in that. We've also set up on our website specifically more for people interested in, in the Chinese domains, the numerics and the letters. We have a domain availability chart that updates every 15 minutes that will show you pretty much in real time what's remaining in the different LLL, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So you can go to um, Nick.club availability. Also on that same page, we publish a list of dropping domains the next five days worth of dropping domains, and that's updated once a day. So if you're interested in tracking the drop and that kind of stuff, there's some data there that you can grab that you might find helpful. Um, now, as you know, there's, there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding about the Chinese regulations and what, what registries are allowed to do or not allowed to do. So basically, as a, as a non-Chinese registry, we can offer our domains for sale, um, but registrants in China cannot host our domains in China. So there cannot be a website with a .dot uh, address hosted in mainland China. But that doesn't mean there aren't a lot of Chinese language websites already for .dot club. Um, many of them are hosted in, in Hong Kong and other places. But we have celebrities like Wang Xian, who's a tennis player in China. She played in the US Open this year. Um, Jay Tu, big music star in China. Um, he uses j2u.club. So we have a lot of live sites there. Um, Running Cat is a fitness club. Uh, this is a cosmetics company using their dot club name in Chinese. Um, in Coffee dot club, Chinese coffee shop. So there's a lot of usage already, but of course it's very limited. Today the marketplace in China is primarily driven by domain investors. Um, so what we're really excited is about is the next phase in China. You know, we, we got the bump that everyone got in Q4 of last year. So far this year has been pretty good in China as well. But you know, that business has to shift for the market to really grow, to really take advantage of the huge opportunity, opportunity that China presents. It has to grow beyond just the main investors and also involve the small businesses and entrepreneurs, which actually will help the main investors as well because it will help raise the value of their portfolios. So as I said, we've been going to China for a long time. Um, we applied for our um, business license, our WUFI, this is our actual business license in China, which we received last year. So we're well along in the process of getting MIIT approval, and we suspect that we'll, we'll be in the first wave of Western registries to gain such approval. And that's when we get really excited, because that's when we can open up the opportunity for Dot Club in China to reach out to other small businesses. Because, uh, you know, but we're not going to get stuck on China, uh, although it's, it's, it is a little bit like crack because of all those registrations and all those premium name sales, it's been very exciting for the whole industry. But we also have to recognize that it's a big world out there and our vision for Dot Club is to, to really grow the global brand and satisfy the whole world. And as you saw in some of the examples I gave already, you know, websites in Germany, Croatia, you know, Australia, all over the world, you know, we see active use with Dot Club, which is really what we're most excited about. So, you know, in summary, from a domain investor perspective, there are definitely opportunities for domain investors within the new domain extensions. We know of personally many people who bought dot club names, either premium names and flipped them, or hand-registered great names and flipped them for considerable profits, you know, 
So there is an active market out there. There are as many names listed on CEDO by the registry as there are by people who aren't part of the registry who are just listing their dot club names for resale. So, so there's an active marketplace out there and opportunities do exist, not just with dot club, but with other new extensions, but not with all of them. You know, not all domains are created equal, and as a domain investor, you know, it behooves you to figure out where the opportunities lie, which are the domains that make sense to invest in uh, over the others. And, and finally, this is not rocket science or anything new, but the value opportunity comes from, from getting the right domain into the hands of the right end user. And so, you know, if you can pick up a, a domain of a new extension, a premium name, and then market it to the right buyer, you're going to make a profit. You know, uh, there's tremendous opportunities out there. And despite all of that, you know, haters are going to hate, and that's <laughs> fine with me. We'll let the haters hate. We'll go chugging along and crank our business out and, and hopefully continue to be successful. So that, that my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any, any questions anyone has if we have Thank time. you very much.